So there'll be vegetarian options and Google uh, gluten-free options. So don't worry. And serious music and fun. So um, today we're going to start out by singing all our songs today with a hymnal. That's why you don't have one. Because you don't need one. All right. We're going to sing. Start out by singing a song called "Gather Here." Do you all know this one? Gather here in the mystery of the hour. Gather here in one strong body. That's us, the one strong body. Gather here in the struggle and the power. Spirit draw near. So we're calling the spirits, okay? And we're going to drum and sing. Dark's going to help me. And Meg.
sing it. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of the Brazos Valley, UUCVV, or Brazos UU for short. My name is Meg, and my pronouns are she, her. I'm serving as your worship assistant today. We are a welcoming congregation, which means we celebrate and welcome all people of diverse sexual orientations and gender identities. We also strive to welcome people across diversities of race, age, ability, immigration status, and belief. We are also a congregation working for reproductive justice. So, whoever you are, wherever you come from, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. If you have a joy or a concern, please write it in the book that Allison is going to start passing around in a minute. And Reverend Kaya will read it. Please remember that our service is recorded, so don't write anything so personal that you wouldn't want strangers to see it. It's football game parking time. And Bobby Presley, Bobby, will you raise your hand so they'll know who to talk to? Bobby Presley needs volunteers to help. The first home game is September the 2nd. Please contact him for more info. Oh, one more. This Saturday is the Mobile Food Pantry at the Boys and Girls Club on Beck Street. Not the old one, the new one. And uh, we need helpers. So if you'd like to sign up, the sign up sheet will be on our website. And uh, if you don't, if you have trouble with the heat, you can volunteer to work at the volunteer desk. You can uh, you can help put the things in the bags early in the morning. You don't have to come in the hard heat, or you can come late and help clean up. So there's many opportunities, but they desperately need our help in August. So wear a hat, drink lots of water. There's water and snacks there too. Okay. So, um, Ian is going to come help me do the chalice lighting. I think I know how he got it. You do? Okay. Yeah, you got it. Right on. Woo! Hold it. Excellent. Now blow it out, but away from them. There you go. Perfect. Woo! Our call to worship this morning comes from the uh, new international version of the Bible. It's Psalm number 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things for she. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for them. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed their righteousness to the nations. They have remembered their love and their faithfulness to Israel. All the ends of the earth have the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the heart, with the heart and the guitar and the cajon. And the sound of singing with trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn, which I can't play one. Shout for joy before the Lord and King. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clasp their hands, let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord. For he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the people with equity. Now all please join me in saying our affirmation. Love the spirit of this church and serve the This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace to see the truth in love, and to help one another. As Unitarian Universalists, we believe that there's a spark of the divine in every being. Some people think just people, but I think all the beings. And so this is your opportunity to say hello to the divine within the room. Please make an extra effort to say hello to people you don't know, people who are younger than you, and people who are older than you. And I'll let you know when we're done.
got a third part, Darby. <laughs> Keep your heart open, 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 keep your heart open. Now, if you have trouble remembering all the words of the song, sing that one. You gotta keep, you gotta keep your heart, your heart, your heart wide open. between our human beingness and the ultimate, whatever that may be. So what role does God or the divine, the spirit of life, the creative spirit, love, insert preferred terminology here, play in process theology? Well, to illustrate, I want you to think of a time when you tried to wake someone up early in the morning when they'd rather be sleeping. There are lots of ways to wake someone up. You can sing songs. On Fridays at my house, we sing the 2011 Rebecca Black Masterpiece. It's Friday, Friday. 
And um, I can tell you that it doesn't always work. <laughs> you can steal covers so that the chill of the air touches their feet and shocks someone out of sleep. You can also physically pick someone up out of bed. Although I recommend this for under the teenage years, if you care about your back. All of this may work, but it's not the best way to get someone out of bed. If you really want somebody to get up and get moving, you should make pancakes. I wonder if you can imagine what pancakes smell like. As the scent of breakfast goes into the bedroom, noses start to twitch and eyes open on their own. People might lounge around a bit, but the smell of pancakes will push someone toward that ultimate breakfast goodness. In this example, and in process theology, God is the scent of the pancakes in the morning. To stir an awakening toward goodness in your heart, but ultimately allowing the sleeper to choose to get out of bed themselves. The spirit of life lures creation forward in a continually unfolding process of growing and becoming process. Just like the smell of pancake lures a sleepy kid out of bed, or adult. The smell of uh, pancakes don't force you out of bed. And the divine can't make anyone or anything do anything. But your heartstrings get pulled, and something activates a deeper longing for goodness or pancakes. <laughs> we are all connected and relational, meaning that everything affects everyone else. We live in a universe of beings that can fully and freely choose their actions and how they are in relationship with everything else. Because of this freedom, the way that the universe unfolds is not determined. It's always becoming, becoming, becoming what the participants within the universe choose it to become. Whew. Our choices define us, and they also define and determine what the universe becomes. So in process theology, we are co-creators of the universe. We are inspired by deep longings toward love to create a reality that we might call beloved community. Okay, Allison, but this service is about art. Question mark, question mark, question mark. I'm so glad you brought that up, Enter Allison. Think of understanding process theology like creating a painting. You start with a blank canvas, and I could choose to pick, like, paint a still life, a landscape, a portrait, but where does that spark of creativity come from that determines what I paint? What makes me choose certain elements? How do I know when my painting is finished? Is my painting ever finished? All of these deep judgment calls when creating art are choices that affect what the piece will look like and how people will view it and how it will affect them. The spirit of creativity cannot force you to paint something you don't want to, but it can spark a longing toward creating art that brings the world something a little brighter or brings the world a little bit more justice. Creation of a piece of art is continuing the unfolding of the universe. So I invite you to sit with process theology and explore it if it speaks to you. Listen to your inner self and see what direction life is trying to take you. The choices you make can help create a world that is more just, more beautiful, and more loving. But it's up to you, and you, and you, and you, to get out of bed or to pick up the paintbrush. So I invite all of my younger UUs to RE with me across the hall. And let everyone else please sing us out to this little light of mine.
theology. <laughs> That's a good feeling. All right, thank you so much. Did everybody have a chance to write on the joys and concerns? This is the time in our service where we share those joys and concerns with the rest of the community while holding in our hearts a, a, a deep respect for the things that are not being said in the room. Oh, no. Olga says, our AC went out this week, but repair guys put in a temporary fix to make our house livable this weekend. Amen. Um, this is a concern that I'm not sure who from. It says, it hasn't rained for 43 days in uh, Bryan College Station. Holding the, the parched earth, stressed plants, and thirsty animals in our thoughts. Hoping all our fellow humans have a place to cool off. All right. I assume this is Jimmy. Jimmy passed his float test at swim school and got to put his handprint on the wall. Right. So, may we remember those who have spoken, those who have been named, and those we hold in silence in our hearts. Amen. You've heard this one before. It goes, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on freedom. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on freedom. And then it goes, hallelujah. If you don't know what to say anymore, just go hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> and then it's walking and talking with my mind stayed on freedom. And then it's singing and praying with my mind stayed on freedom. Oh,
So there was this French uh, Catholic bishop uh, named Albert Roost, and he said that the arts are an irreplaceable part of good liturgy. Now, what's liturgy? Anybody know? Anybody got an opinion? Yes, Carolyn, want to tell us? It's how we celebrate our relationship with one another, with God, with the universe. Perfect. It's how we do it. Yeah, it's our. It's how we. It's the actual practice of the process theology. It's the we're in. We're involved with each other. It's intentional. We're doing it on purpose. I'm. Work, I'm in a doctorate program right now. That I'm very excited about. It's called the Wonder Track. And my job in school is to figure out how to get more art and celebration in our worship and kind of wake up the worship. So this part today I'm going to talk about is just how art could be part of our liturgy in a way that builds community. There are different processes and different thoughts about it. Every religion Actually, you have liturgies. Think of something you do every day. Whatever it is. I always have my coffee. I have it with this many creams. I watch this. I eat this. Those are liturgies. You're making habits in your life. We as a congregation can decide what kind of world we want to build in our community and do it intentionally. And I believe, and I hope that you all agree, that uh, by incorporating art and really focusing on including that, everyone will feel more authentic and more appreciated and more inspired because you can't just use your head. This is a mistake from the en Enlightenment that has kind of gotten in the way of Unitarian Universalism in general, is that we're a little bit too reason heavy. Y'all agree? Okay, now some of that comes because we are Calvinist-related religion. And Calvin was not a big fan of music distracting you from heaven. He's, uh, yeah. Meg, tell the story about uh, Calvin and the soup. Um, so they were having dinner around the table, and his daughter said to the mom, oh, the soup is great. And Calvin reached over and poured some water into it so she wouldn't enjoy it quite so much, <laughs> making her too worldly. Yeah, so anyway, that's what we started from. And it was great. It was especially great when people would start questioning the Bible, like when the printing press happened and people could start reading the Bible in English, which people got killed for putting it in English in the first place. We can talk about that sometime. But at some point, people started reading it for themselves and they were making decisions about what, how they thought was the best way to get you where they wanted to go, which was far away from the earth, the earth being a worldly thing, and far away from people and to heaven. Like, what do you all think about heaven? Anybody got any ideas about it? Like, maybe it doesn't exist? Anybody on that on that plane? Okay, right on, right on. Okay, how about, there is a new, I read a book by a guy named Rob Bell recently, who's a minister, and he's kind of gotten in trouble because he's a universalist. And he thinks everybody should think of the kingdom as where we are right now. And that concept is pretty radical in, in mainstream Christianity, although we're kind of like, yeah, okay. <laughs> but it's a really well-written book. If it's something that interests you, I would recommend his book. Love Wins is what it's called. Um, it's a great book. So what's missing in our liturgy? What's missing? Why are we not balanced? Why are we a little too... Reasonable, why do you go and listen to sermons that cut bore you to slaughter? I don't want to be one of those people that do that to you. And I also want to incorporate what I know to be true from being a musician and an artist, which is that instinct and intuition should be valued equally with reason and knowledge. It's not how many degrees you have, Kaya. 
<laughs> it's also about what you know in your heart. What do you know to be true? And so one of the ways that we are trying to work as Unitarian Universalists to expand our horizons is to become a little more balanced, to include more spirit in our day-to-day -day activities and our actions in the world, as well as being more welcoming to people who are not from the same economic class or race. And so the songs that we're singing today are all from the African-American tradition, which is an oral-based tr tradition. And it's very welcoming to people who haven't been taught to read music. It's very welcoming to everybody. You all have heard this music your whole life. Our entire pop culture is built on African-American music. So it should be really comfortable, right? It should be, all right, here's the other thing. We are entitled, every human being, every being really, is entitled to use their voice. Somebody told you you couldn't sing. I had a teacher tell me I couldn't sing. Don't listen to them. They're telling you a wrong thing. That's a wrong thing, it's sort of an evil thing, right? Everybody's entitled to be themselves and everybody's entitled to use their voice. And singing is a, is a right from the spirits. You know, if, if you don't believe in spirits, singing is just a right. Okay, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you understand that everybody can sing. Y'all are doing it. Um, beauty and wonder are what we need to put back in, embody in our worship so that we're excited and joyful when we go to church. That's what I want to do. The last thing I want to do is, is you know, torture you with a bunch of dry stuff. That's, you know, that doesn't build community. Why do you go to church? There's so much loneliness in the world. People are so removed from the planet, from their own souls. They don't know who they are. How can we encourage people to be themselves? How can we encourage people to be in community and be supportive with each other. We're social beings. So a lot of the stuff I'm talking about is just basic like that. Art in community. How can we incorporate more art? Those of y'all who are visual artists, how can we put more visual art in the service? How can we put more dance? How can we put more different styles of music? Y'all may have noticed since I got here that I'm quite wide in my Perspective. I do not think classical music is better than pop music or folk music. I don't. And I think improvisation is just as important as composition. So, uh, and by the, I'll show you what I mean. This sermon was supposed to be a two-part sermon, but I got COVID. And so you missed the first part. So I'm kind of, I'm feeling jumbled and I'm trying to put both parts in one sermon. So forgive me if I'm staying off script a lot because it's real hard for me to, to get it broken down where it's easy. So I went to San Francisco to Grace Cathedral, which is a, a church, uh, Episcopal Cathedral in San Francisco that has a great tradition like St. John of the Divine from uh, New York of incorporating art in cultural <coughs> activities of their church and they're very social justice oriented and very welcoming place. And so Bobby McFerrin has his school there. How many people have ever seen Bobby McFerrin in concert? Did you all ever participate? Bobby McFerrin, you know, he did Don't Worry, Be Happy, and he made a whole lot of money. And then he was, got art artistically bored with that. I think he's never sang it again in the last 20 years. Um, and he started improv and doing solo show shows, improvisation with the audience. When the, the one you went to, the, do they do that? Okay. Well, what's happened is, and that is like in the 90s that he was doing that, um, he did a record called Circle Songs, where it was all improv with him doing all the sounds with his mouth. So he was doing beatboxing, so he's going, Like a drum kit, making the sounds of a drum kit. You can practice all this stuff on your own. 
because we're going to do some of it. And then um, sing in the bass part. You know, it doesn't matter if you're a woman or a man, you can do it. If you've got a lower, use the lower part of your voice and try to make it sound like a bass. If you want to play trumpet, you can try to play trumpet. I, I've been trying to learn how to do the trumpet sound, but... Alright? So, anyway, what if you were by yourself and you had to do a concert with your people and you're just going to make stuff up? So I went to school to learn how to lead this and uh, when we graduated we got a uh, thing that says MSU. You got a degree in MSU, which is making stuff up. <laughs> so I'll just give you a little example of it. We can just experiment. But um, I'm going to do more of this with you. Anyway, so what I need is a, a bass part. So a real simple bass part, maybe. Let's just go. did all the microtoning kind of stuff. And it was so spiritual, I cannot tell you. With, uh, in the Hindu tradition, they use the Vedas that way. They learn these ragas and then they improvise on them. And, and this woman was an expert in that and she would sing on top of what we just did. It was amazing. And there's no reason why we can't do that and put hymns on top of it. Or just how you're feeling. You can just improvise how you feel like in a blues song. You know, I feel so bad this morning. I feel so bad today, but that's not true because I actually feel great. I feel so great this morning. You know, and then uh, and then uh, in the blues you have call and response. So what you'll notice in the in the gospel songs we're singing, they all have call and response because they're built for community singing, right? They're built for community singing. They're not. You, know, you can write them down. But then that sort of limits you on what you're free to do. And what we want to do is want to listen to each other. And we're, I'm talking about music, but I'm also talking about every other thing that we do. Every other thing we do. We're going to listen to each other. We're going to try to blend in and make a good blend. Not overpower anyone. Not underpower. Be represented. Be part of the community and make music together, make worship together, make liturgy together, all those things. Everybody with me? Amen? Amen. All right. So, art is in worship all the time, right? With music, we know for sure. Architecture and sacred spaces, how we designed our church. Think about it. When you're walking around in there, there's a reason why the skylight's there. There's a reason why there's a clear glass wall where you can look at nature. Because we value nature. We value our connection to it and our inner webness, right? And that is the future that we're trying to build. We want to build a, a world that is active, social justice, that is caring and kind and inclusive of people who are different from us, right? Making our us, making our we, expanding our we. That's, we're going to make a place 
in College Station, Brian, that people can be themselves in and feel supported in their spiritual journeys, even if they totally disagree. That's my favorite thing to have to explain to people when we're at the mobile food pantry. They're like, what, what, what do y'all believe over there? And they, they're like, what do you mean there's no hell? I'm like, no hell, sorry. You can have it if you want to. You can believe in it, but I'm not going to preach it ever, right? And uh, they're like, "What? How do you make, how do you make people behave?" It's like people behave because it's good for them. It makes their life better. It makes their relationships better. That's a good reason, right? It's just basic. But that's what theology is supposed to be. It's not supposed to be this dry thing that you have to go to college for. It's supposed to be. How we figure out how to do this well. How can we make this better? How can we make uh, caring for the earth more important? How do we make uh, making sure that people on the border are taken care of, making sure that people who are homeless have a place to sleep, that people who are hungry have a place to eat? That is basic, 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 no matter what religion we're talking about. Right? We have this in common. It's basic basics. Just like you have a voice, you've got a right to use it. So, can't carry a tune in a bucket? Nobody cares. You can play drums. You can sing the beat, drum beat. You can play, sing the bass part, right? Here's the other secret weapon that no people don't tell you. The more you try this stuff, the better you'll be at it. It is a muscle, just like, like running, like body. How, how much could you run when you first started running? About 100 yards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you sing and your voice wobbles, sing more. Don't sing less. Don't judge yourself all the time. Give your little person that's critical a room at Harvard that they can lecture about how terrible you are. <laughs> while, while, you are while you are celebrating, you're breathing in and out. It's physically great for you to sing and be in community. It's bonding. It literally creates a bond. That's why soldiers do it, and you know any kind of team does it. Why, why, why you sing all the chants at the A and M game? That's because you're making a community, right? That's what we're doing. Makes sense. So we've got architecture, we've got technology and production. There's no reason not to use the things that we've got, right? Can we enhance the worship with a video? or having good sound. Like, we're entitled to those things. And our new space is built for it. We're gonna be able to do theater and art and music and celebrations of all kinds. And there's no limit. Say you're really good at theater. Like, John, you know? And we wanna tell a story. Allison wants to tell a story. We can make puppets. We can do all kinds of stuff that will enhance that story, plus make it more fun, and more people tell the story. So the more people involved in worship, the better for everybody. Right? Everybody, on one, you'll have more respect for those of us who do it, and when we make a mistake, you'll be more kind about it. If you've done it. Can I get a witness on that? Okay, yeah. yeah. Try it, try it yourself and see how perfect you do it. Uh, nature and creation. There's a lot of art in that. Gardening, all the gardeners know that's true. Um, narrative and storytelling, just what I just said. And community and connection, we're building community. One of the failures of early Unitarian Universalism has, there's a lot of wonderful things about transcendentalism. Lord knows I am one. But the, the emphasis on individualism in capitalism and in Transcendentalism is not really what we need in the 21st century. We need to balance it with authentic humanness and vulnerability, but we also need to um, build a world that's more focused on how to build community. We're not good at building community. We're good at getting mad and quitting. We're good at not showing up. But we're not necessarily good at how, learning how to have relationships in the long haul with people that we might disagree with or not have that much in common with. 
But we can build, we're going to have to learn to do this to save the planet. Does everybody see that? These are the things that we have to deal with. So, okay, we've got visual art and architecture and music and chanting and dance and movement and poetry. Poetry, poetry, poetry. We need poetry because it's one of the things that connects us instantly. Right? We sing in a song and you like the theology of it. You like it. I'm going to keep my heart wide open. Oh, the waves going to push us around. I'm going to keep my heart wide open till our faith brings us back to solid ground. That could be very hopeful and inspiring, especially if you're having a hard time. Gospel is full of songs like that. All right? All right. Ceremonial spaces, making ritual, making patterns that we feel connected to. How many people grew up in a tradition that there's a lot of ritual and you miss that? We can get better at it. But we have to incorporate spirit in our worship and not be just so head heavy. We gotta have our this in it. We gotta do it from the bottom of our feet. If we do all those things and we're totally embodied, there's a reason why that word in English, embodied, and it has the word body in it. We need to be embodied in our worship and in our practices so that we are powerful in the world. And we really make the kind of world we want to live in. Imagine that world where heaven and earth are the same thing. That's where I want to live. How about you? Yeah. 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 All right. Amen. Okay. So, let's sing. This one's called, Now Let Us Sing. You've probably heard it before. Now let us sing to the power of the faith. Now let us sing to the power of the faith. Your voice, of your voice, be not afraid. Be not afraid. Now let us sing to the power of the faith. Now let us.
we've got the words up there because I know some of y'all are very attached to this, but try to take yourself off the page. Try to take yourself off and actually incorporate the words into your body. You know what I mean? Now let us sing. Sing to the power of the love within. Right? Just so. Practice in your car when you're by yourself. <laughs> Just sing a little bit. See if it doesn't make you feel better. They've done all kinds of studies that a different part of your brain lights up when you sing with other people. And it's really, really good for your breath. It's really, really good for your blood pressure. This is, you know, it's healthy, but that's not why you do it. Do it because it's fun. If it's not fun, don't do it. And if you have suggestions of songs or you would like to get more involved in singing, there's going to be a lot of opportunities once we get in the building. And right now, frankly, there's lots of opportunities. So thank you for listening to me today. Now that an offering be taken to sustain and strengthen this place, which is sacred to so many of us, a community of memory and of hope, for we are now the keepers of the dream. This church shares the proceeds of the offering plate donation every week to support the important nonprofit organizations with which we work. You gotta keep your heart wide open. The waves gonna push you around. The waves gonna push you around. You gotta keep your heart wide open.